Well, first off, the podcast is called See Me First, and it's more so about like all you know us creatives. Uh, no. I'm talking to you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's uh, basically because I struggle. I feel like people have all this perception, these perceptions about me, and they don't really get to know me, or they just want something that they want from me as far as like choreography, me to show face or anything like that. And it's like, okay, but did you ask me how I'm doing? Do you, do you know if I'm really truly available or am I really just going on my way to make this done for you? So that's why I'm like talking to different people, just kind of get their life story, like all the things that they've been through, things that got them where they are and where they're trying to go and really just be real and authentic and not just always trying to hide behind like who people know us as. So that's what we doing. I fuck, I, Amber, I fuck with that. That's good. Talk to me that's first. Good. Uh, I just yeah, have, I'm nervous. Just, look, take, look, take, take three sips. Okay. So let's, let's start then. Let's, 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 okay. let's take a sip. Let's take a sip. Let's just. Yay. Okay, you actually didn't do that though. Take a sip and let's just go for it. All right, so really, I got you here because I wanted to talk to you, but what really brought you to Atlanta in the first place? So, randomly, I came to Atlanta because I wanted to see Tina Turner the musical. I'm big on musicals. I'm big on Broadway. So, Broadway comes to Atlanta a lot, so Mm -hmm. I really came to Atlanta because I wanted to see this show. So, obviously, I came to your show. You um, did come Dream see my Girls. show. You did come see my show. Thank and you. And being that you were able to perform in Dream Girls in Birmingham and you live in Birmingham, what would you say is different from being in a Birmingham play compared to what Atlanta has to offer? Birmingham is where the talent is. Oh. <laughs> Birmingham <laughs> is it. Atlanta has to bring people in to perform. Birmingham. So you know you're gonna have to, you know. Make in, that Bir- make sense. in Birmingham, we are raised and bred and trained there, so it's not like a. I feel a, like this is a real biased answer. Let me like, ca- let me call these people and be like, hey, come to Atlanta perform. We're already here. Oh. The talent is in the city. Oh. We're already inside. So <laughs> the difference is a touring cast versus an in-city cast. So are you telling me Atlanta has no in-city cast? <laughs> I'm not saying that because Atlanta has a lot of talent. But I'm saying the difference in between the difference in between Tina Turner and Dream Girls uh-huh. is that the Dream Girls cast lives in Birmingham. So make sure you let everybody know like what was your role in Dream Girls. So So I was in the ensemble, which means that I was a lot of different people. I danced, I sung, I played different characters. It was a lot. <laughs> I mean, you was everybody. You was the the lawyer. I was a lawyer. I was a. You. (laughs) I was a lawyer. I was a dancer. I was a singer. I was. But can you sing? I can sing. My mic was on. But let me hear. My mic was on. Okay, but let me hear. I'm gonna ask you, like, Mick, take another sip so I can hear you sing. Okay. (sighs) But even after that sip, (laughs) I'm gonna say buy a ticket. Amber, you're not going to get me. Okay, but it's I'm okay. going to get you. So, you met me at Alabama State University. Yeah, we didn't even introduce I ourselves. Don't, right, but it's okay. They'll figure it out, right? Okay. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to figure out, when did we even start talking? Because I don't know. We started talking. I met Amber in 2016. In 2016, during Beta Phi Alpha, Oh, we had to all choose we had to all choose a mentee and I was like I'm gonna choose Amber because Amber is the opposite of me okay so what what's the of what I perceived so let me go okay yeah break it down Amber <laughs> is the opposite of me from what I perceived I perceived you as quiet mm-hmm. and shy and like real low-key okay so I was like me who's not quiet and low key, Mm -hmm. we will be a good match because I can bring something out of you. Okay. But then I realized, (laughs) Amber don't shut the fuck up. Like, she's not quiet, she is not shy, she is not low key, low key. She just doesn't talk to people that she does not know. So my mindset was like, 
this girl so quiet. Let me make her come out of her shell. But she never had a shell. It's just the fact that she didn't know y'all. Yeah, I think, and that's the thing I feel like with me, I have to stop being that way because I'm you, never going to make friends. You really should because you are a person who has a lot to give. Ooh. But I feel people like you're about to gas me up right now. I'm not gonna gas you up. Oh. I'm gonna just tell the truth. You have a you have a lot to give, and people would never know that because when they see you, you're just like. I ain't gonna wanna smile. And I get you that you're chilling, but you're also chilling. But you have you still have a different side that the outside don't know. So your inside circle, the circle that we know, Amber as, you know, everybody should know. That Amber, while also being low key, <laughs> right? Okay. Because I feel like a lot of people know me, but they don't know me. And that's what I was gonna. But say. nobody knows okay. you. But right. But that's what I was gonna say about See? you. Because I called you and I was like, "What can we talk about? What is, what is the boundaries?" And you was like, "Honestly, I'm an open book." But I said, "But honestly, I don't feel like I've ever really talked to you like that." Yeah. Like I, we had our one conversation over bingo, and I was just, I love that bingo game, guys. <laughs> Ooh, okay. And I didn't win that one time, but it's okay. It's cool. But um. I was just like, I don't think we've ever had a full-blown conversation. Like, we've never been able to sit down and talk about anything. Mm -hmm. So that was, like, the first time. So I'm like, when I was asking you to do this, I was just like, well, what am I about to say? Because I don't even know You can literally ask me any... Hold on. (laughs) (laughs) You can ask me anything. So what I am going to say is the one thing I do remember the most about you, and this is probably not a great memory. It is a great memory because I felt very supported. It was Magic City Classic 2017, and um, we was dancing. You almost was in the stands with me, and you was talking about, wake them hoes up, Amber. And I was just like, waking them up, okay? I'm going to do it. (laughs) But I was just like, he loves me. Like, you know, because I (laughs) – Wake him up, and I was just real. Like, and I think it's because by the, by the time that game came, I knew Amber as not as a sting it. I knew Amber as like, okay, I've met her outside of the team. Mm-hmm. I know these people outside of the team. So me coming to the game was not like a, oh, I'm coming to see the sting it. I'm coming to see people who I genuinely support. So me coming to the game, I was like, okay, they're sleep on her. They feel like Amber is not. This person, not that person. So my whole mindset was like, I'm coming to the game to see what she's about to do because I know Mm -hmm. she's about to do something Mm -hmm. because she's been doing it since 2014. Mm -hmm. Hello? Mm -hmm. I knew you've been doing it since the beginning. So I was like, this is her one moment to really broadcast what she's about. I'm sorry, y'all. I really have to just chill. Thank you. (laughs) That's a great position. I knew that she was about to do something. So me being there... I was going to go to the game anyway, but I knew that you were about to give us something that would just put us in that mindset of this is what Stingett was or this is who Amber is. Mm. This is my team. This is my visual for the team. So let's get into this. So me being there was just like, I fuck with them. Oh, see, and I clearly I'm here, so clearly I do. Yeah. That's true, too. Yeah. You know, I don't invite just anybody. Okay, but anyway, um, what I do want to um, mention to you, well, really ask, because I just kind of want to see where you got your start. Um, we all basically danced growing up. Did you? Because, you know, your mama put, like, my mama put me in dance at, like, four. So how did you even get your start in dance? Like, what was that thing that pushed you to get into it? Okay, so I attended Ramsey High School, which we are the only – school in Birmingham with a dance class or dance program. Mm-hmm. So I didn't start dancing until I was 17. Okay. So I never grew up, grow- I never danced growing up, but at school, I started dancing my sophomore year of high school. Yes, my sophomore year. And there, of course, the classes were free. Mm-hmm. It was a part of my schedule. So my mom honestly didn't have to pay anything. It wasn't anything I had to like, after school, go dance. So my me dancing was built into my curriculum. Okay. So I started in my high school, and from there, I wanted to dance before then, but I I didn't know how to like go home and be like, hey, mom, I want to dance. So what do you think? What do you think? What did you think was gonna be the negative response to hey, mom, I want to dance? I okay. 
the negative was when I told my parents that I was dancing, mm -hmm. I would, one morning, my dad woke me up and he came to me and he said, your mama told me you want to dance. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, come to the program. Cause I invited them to my Christmas program. Mm -hmm. And my daddy came to me and said, I hope you're not one of them boys mm -hmm. that be dancing in a classic parade. Because my friends <laughs> would not, about? he said, my friends would not see you dancing in front of a band. Oh. And I was in my bed like, well, I'm not. <laughs> like, that's not what I'm doing. But that was the mindset, or that's what I didn't want people to think. Like, all males that dance is a dance girl or a majorette. So speaking on that topic, um, that's really popular right now. Um, how do you feel about it? I mean, you are a male dancer yourself. Do you feel like um, men that are dancing are not expanding themselves in different genres? Or do you think like it's just a attention thing? Or like I just want to live this life for at least a couple years? Like, what do you think it is? like? So... <laughs> Half a half. <laughs> okay, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't want it to be taken in the wrong in the wrong way. So when I say half, okay, one point I feel like men can well men and women can do any genre of dance. Right. So if there are men who want to do majorette style, baby, put the leotard on <laughs> and book your life away. <laughs> I have no problems with it because if you ask me to throw a count, I'll better you right now. Oh. But I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but at the same time, it's what your preference is. Right. Now, my disclaimer is men who do majorette only focus on that one style. Gotcha, yeah. Because there are some males who are majorette dancers and are honestly very good. I've seen, I ran a couple, a couple, I ran across a couple Instagram videos of some male dancers and they got more technique, more flexibility. They bust, they, they be dancing. They be dancing, but they, but the they don't that, go they have dance. all the technique. Yeah. They have all the performance quality, but they only focus on, I want to throw counts. It's so many men who can really dominate, mm -hmm. but in their mind, it's like, I want to be a major at dancer. So this is what I'm going to focus on. I'm going to throw these counts and that's it. Mm -hmm. Those individuals, I want them to like take what you like and build upon it, right. build on it because, like you say, they have the technique, they have the performance quality, they can really do so much. But I feel like they see y'all, and I, I see say y'all as in the major at world, they see y'all and just like, oh, I want to do that, mm -hmm. but you can't because honestly, these band directors aren't going to choose you. So yeah. it's like, how do you take this and make your own market? How do you take this and make your own world? Because honestly, they could outdance a lot of women in the HBCU world. These men can outdance a lot of them. Probably. But yeah. it's just finding your avenue of how you're going to showcase, showcase that you're going to outdance them. <laughs> Did you know what you just said in that last sentence? I feel yeah, like because they can do it. <laughs> like, I and feel I, like you just started. I'm saying it because I want them to do it. I want them to find a way that's not like um, summer band oh, or like yeah. Instagram or TikTok. Like, take your talents and really create something because... Let me pause you right there. I think the issue is, and when we're talking about talent, we can talk about you have the dance ability, but you don't have the creative Did you mindset. notice how when you paused me, I froze? Because uh, I was paused. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm on play now. Because okay. <laughs> so, I want to make a drink. Oh my God, I'm going to make it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you back? I'm back. Okay. I'm on play. So, <laughs> so what I was saying is I feel like there's a there's two types of creators. One who can actually just do the performance or one that has the performance ability and the uh, visual aspect. Oh, God. What did I do wrong? No, I keep going. <laughs> um, and, they, and they don't have the creativity to actually see the future or see what, they, what their ability, what their physical abilities can bring them and set them up for. And I just think that I think the world has to start seeing that. I think 
we are all so simple minded. Oh, that girl can dance. Oh, that boy can dance. Oh, he bomb. But it's like, okay, but what he gonna do in two years? Oh, okay, what he gonna do in three years? He gonna be bomb for now and for what? For what? Like what? You know what I'm saying? That, like, so how my, far are you gonna take it? I agree because I feel like this might be off top, but I believe that with creating, mm -hmm. just because you could dance does not mean that you're like a choreographer. Does not mean that you're a creator. Yes, because no. some people can dance, but they can't create. That's so yes, very I true. People <laughs> like, oh my God, Amber should be Catherine because she could dance, but Amber can't choreograph. <laughs> so Amber field shows look like shit. Amber <laughs> counts look like shit. <laughs> Everything that Amber does look like bleh. <laughs> Like, it's, and that's not even with y'all, oh but it's just God. like in general, dance in general, yeah. just because you can physically dance does not mean that you can create, does not mean that you can lead, yeah. does not mean that you are a person who should be in a leadership role. And I think it just depends on the person if does. people don't think, think about that. Right. Because I don't think people are having enough conversations. I think we're all looking Ooh, at well, what we can see. let's converse about it. We, aren't we? We are. Let's <laughs> keep on. I got to go back to my spot. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, I don't think um, they're ha not having enough conversations. I even think in, in the professional dance world, I don't. I mean, I haven't auditioned for anything professionally, so please let me know if I'm talking out my ass on this one. But I don't really see enough conversations going on about what type of person are you, um, what type of leader are you. Um, yeah. When it comes to creativity, what can you see? What can you do? Not just okay, you did like three turns. I think I'm very impressed. Or Oh, that combo you just did was flawless. The technique was great. Okay, we want you. But then when you get them, they're like the worst attitude. They're, they're like the worst individual in the world. And I think with you, for me, I feel like you're very well-rounded. I think you have the you have the attitude, um, you have the, the conversation, and you have the skill. And then you have a great um, team around you. You have a lot of friends. Okay, <laughs> stop. I'm going to cry. <laughs> 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 you have a great wow. team. Wow. Okay. Like, good, good. Good topic. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> and for and what I want to know from you is what are you looking for when it comes to friends? Like, how do you know who to keep in your circle or who to you know throw them to the wayside? Like, what is that thing that you look for? Okay. I don't really look for anything. Okay. I feel like the people who genuinely are supposed to be in my life really somehow stick around. So I've never looked for a friend. Mm -hmm. I've never asked anybody to be my friend. Mm -hmm. But I have a lot of friends. You do. And it's crazy because... <laughs> it's a boatload. I'd be like, God, dog. No. I mean, I'm serious. Because when I was watching your story, I'm like, about 50 people in a day came and seen Dream Girls for Darius. Okay, here we are on the next show. Okay, it's 25. Okay, here go the next one. Okay, it's about five on this one. Everybody was busy that day. Then the next one is 100. I'm like, God, dog. No. Like, and it's because I really don't look for relationships i feel like i i'm never like trying to change myself to like fit another person so i'm going to be myself all the time mm -hmm. and the people who attract me or the people that i attract mm -hmm. come and in those attractions i genuinely meet genuine friendships or people who i consider to be like my family now mm -hmm. like it just it just happens right. so literally i have friends from kindergarten that I'm still friends with. That's, that's, that's a good one. Because we, we just matched. People from college, I would never not consider them a friend because we just matched. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a, I don't know how I ended up with some of the friends, but I will say that I'm very <laughs> grateful. <laughs> I'm very thankful to them. I'm grateful to God that he sent me a group of people who I can really love and trust to support me. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know, but I don't want to know why. No, yeah. I mean, I feel like, yeah, you definitely blessed. I think with me personally, it's not that I don't have a lot of friends. I think, like, I think it's me. I do think it's me. I think I, I am a little bit more closed off. Like, I have a friend. Like, she would call me all the time to ask me how I'm doing. And I'd be like, yeah, girl, I'm this, that, and third. But I'm like, maybe I should, like, be a little bit more perky on the phone because she calls me with a lot of energy. And I give back, like, Bleh. But, like, people accept that from me. And I'm like... Some people, like, I'm the because type of person. Because that's the norm. Yeah, but I'm the person, you got to get in my ass. Like, you got to tell me about myself or well, I'm going to think it's We okay. don't want to get in there. But we're going to at least get to know you. We're going to figure you out. 
<laughs> but you gotta let me know because if you never let me know, I'm never gonna change. Gotcha. Um, so I definitely I admire that about you because I'm like, dang, I want I want like a lot of people to come for me, but you know. Well, you know, I'm always come. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. That's why you're here. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that's why I come. Who? <laughs> but I was gonna ask you. Um, so yeah, we're talking about friends, but when it comes to relationships, is it that easy? Um, the answer is no. Mm, tell me why. So it's not that it's not easy, but I feel like relationships are people. This means journey. <laughs> 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 Look, that's what this means. It's a journey because you never know like what you're gonna get. Like it's two people coming together trying to like mix two personalities two families two lifestyles so it's just like it's a lot so no relationship is going to be easy of course you're going to find a person who you match with but you have to find a way to like match the two lives as one Mm -hmm. and if that's your end goal you have to find a way to like really Press your way through all of the journeys and the trials and the so and the headaches. Yeah. So, what's the biggest headache you've had so far? Uh, him. <laughs> <laughs> that is the headache. <laughs> but I will say, honestly, I'm joking. But it's not really a headache. I feel like the biggest headache is us trying to just like blend everything together. Because if you ask me anything that like has gone wrong in my in my relationship, I can't really name one mm-hmm. specific thing. Well, let me ask you reason. Let me ask you why you can't. I'm gonna, just let me ask a question, god damn it. So, is it <laughs> would you say you can't name it because it ends up not being that big or like what? Because like if I talk about my relationship, like I can I'll run down the list, but I think because I make things bigger than what they are. I'm like this was bad, this was bad, but then I'm like no, but I love all of this stuff. Oh. So, it's like is it would it be a mental thing that you would you know, be able to name stuff that you feel like is not good or what would you? Okay. So that could be it because I don't look at certain stuff as being big. Mm-hmm. It could be big, but I'm also like a um, <clears throat> an optimistic person. Mm-hmm. So it might be big to someone else, but in my mind, I know who I want. Right. I know who I'm going to be with. Mm-hmm. I know who like my end goal is going to be. So regardless if you get on my nerves or not, <laughs> I know that you're like you're it. You're yeah. it. And it's like I feel like once you find that one person, once you find who you're going to be with, mm-hmm. those little things might be hard, might be a headache, mm-hmm. might get on your nerves, but it's like once you find that person, who cares if you don't clip your toenails? Who cares if you talk too much? Who cares if you <laughs> snore? Who cares if you don't like me on Tuesdays? Because mm-hmm. Tuesdays in 20 years, you're going to be waking up next to me. Right. So it's like you just got to find ways to like mash and mingle because, like I said, I know who I want. Mm-hmm. And if they don't want me, they can leave this um, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we have anybody to walk <laughs> out? <laughs> anybody want to leave? All right, okay. very good, very good. <laughs> but seriously, it's like once you find that person, I feel like it doesn't matter because you just start the mesh. Yeah, I think um, with relationships, it's just always hard trying to realize that you're not only pleasing yourself at this point in life. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you are the most dramatic person I know. That, is so, that <laughs> is so good because I feel like I I never think about myself anymore because yeah. I wake up every morning like, oh, should I send flowers? Aww. Oh, should I like send a little a little song? You wanna send me flowers? I'll send you song just because if it's I'm gonna make sure you got the address. If it make you smile, I will yeah. send them. Can because it? I just like to like be that person for other people. So it's like when you find that person, you not only do you want them to change, but you also start to kind of change yourself. So, and when you see yourself change, that's when you're like, whew. I was just, bro. You might, you might I like them. Because <laughs> I ain't never changed myself for nobody else. And now no, here I am looking real. stupid. I'm well, like, not stupid, but. You just be like, who am I? It. Right. I'm like, because who I, am I? No, for real. Because I was just telling him, I'm like, yo, like, 
I have changed so much. I'm so much nicer. I'm, <sighs> I'm like, give me a hug. Like when I say so <laughs> much nicer, I feel like Maya Angelou. I be writing poems <laughs> and shit. Like, <laughs> God damn. Like, who am, who am I? <laughs> but at the end of the day, I would say I love who <laughs> is in my space. So One. don't take it as a um, bad. It's very well. I heard nothing It's bad. very, nothing is bad. Nothing bad out of none of that. But there's always going to be a mountain. Okay. And either you're going to drive up that mountain, like Sheila, on Why Did I Get Married? <laughs> or you're going to stay at the bottom of the hill and get left behind. <laughs> so it's really your choice. Either your motor going to make up this mountain, yeah. or you're going to be down in my yeah, way. Like... And I'm way <laughs> <laughs> Why are you here? <laughs> you told me to come. I know. <laughs> Oh, God damn. Okay, hold on. You drunk your drink faster than me? No, actually, you refilled already. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Thank you, America. I refilled. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> is it? Oh, wow. It's such a beautiful... Let, okay. What you want to do? Gloat about the... What you about to do? Tell them. Tell hey, them. Tell <laughs> Let me tell y'all. This is very random. But I fucking love Amber. <laughs> Can you. the people see me? Is this a good angle? Okay. I, I, would, I, I love Amber Prickett. And if you've never met her, you have done yourself a disjustice. <laughs> because y'all think y'all know. But what do you know? <laughs> you don't know her. <laughs> is this a commercial break? So I feel like it, it is a commercial break. <laughs> it feel like a whole ass commercial. <laughs> it's a commercial break. Meet Amber. Don't judge her. <laughs> Meet her. Are you a judge? First of all, you're not even a judge. Who are you, Judge Mathis? No. So you should meet her instead of judging her. Oh my and God. commercial break over. <laughs> <laughs> but look, clap for her. <laughs> so I know you were saying like you were like you're that type of person. You're that person that likes to do for people. You like to make them put. A, you like to put a smile on their face. Do you ever get tired? Honestly, I don't ever get tired. How? Now, um, you said how? No, for real, how do you not get tired? How do you not feel like you're, I mean, cause I mean, let me, let me go back because you do have a team. We already went through this. You have a very supportive team. So what you give out, you get back. So let me more so rephrase the question. Is there some ever been a time that you gave out and did not get back? Honestly, all the time. <laughs> I so I feel like I but I have a mindset of I don't expect what I give to get back. Okay. So honestly, the stuff that I give out, I don't ever really get it back a lot of the times. But I know that I'm coming from a place of like me being genuine or me being a supportive person. So I don't expect people to like give me that in return. Mm -hmm. I feel like when you expect it, that's when you set yourself up. Because if you expect people to treat you a certain type of way, the moment that they don't, you're sad. You're hurt. No, I would never set myself up to be hurt. Let me just cut you off because, I mean, I'm not going to say, like, your life can't be this way. But, like, everything you say, you have a solution for it. Like, you have the way, the mindset. You got everything that you need to steer you right back down the right path if things get rocky. Mm -hmm. When is the time that things were rocky? Like, when did it ever feel like, damn, what am I doing? Like, what, like what's going on with me? Like, what, what, what was that place that even got you to this thoughtful thinking? Like, and I don't know. Really? I don't know because I feel like even as a child, when stuff was going wrong, mm -hmm. I told myself, like, because, like, it's, it's a lot of times where I was probably going through something when I was like, I have nobody to talk to. Mm -hmm. So the person I talked to was myself. So I'm going to tell myself, Man up. Mm -hmm. You can get through it. You so literally told yourself to man up. I can't see all the time. I can't imagine sitting in my film time saying, Woman up. You got this. Cause now I'm boo hoo crying because I'm like, you don't got and, this, girl. And you can't you can cry because I've cried. But I know I know myself better than anybody else. Hmm. So I'm going to tell myself like you're stronger. You can make it through whatever is bothering so you. So when did you not know yourself? You had some level of who am I? Like when did you not know yourself? I never knew myself until I turned, what, 27? Okay, so what And was... I'm 28. But even... <laughs> <laughs> like, 
But even through those times, although I wasn't comfortable or probably didn't know myself, I knew who I wanted to be. Right. So although I had moments of like, I'm not supported. My family can't support me how I want to. My friends don't know who I am. I don't know who I am. I knew who I wanted to be. So me knowing like my end goal mm -hmm. is what really helped me to get to where I am now. So I, it's a lot of times where I wasn't comfortable with who I was, mm -hmm. but I knew who I wanted to be. Got you. So I never thought about like what was going on in the now, mm -hmm. but I did think about like, okay, well your goal is this. So how do you work towards this? So I think, I think that's what's totally opposite about me. I'm in the now. I live day by day, and I just don't know what's going to happen. And you can't. But I do, and I be out here swimming, but I think. You I go <laughs> swim and drown. <laughs> because it's like, imagine like you wake up, you have a good day, and then like you on the way to work, and you have a flat tire. Mm -hmm. Your whole day is insurance. now ruined. Oh, you don't. You do need insurance. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but your day can easily be like ruined off of that one thing going wrong. And I let, but how I do you let take, things take over how I feel, and you do. for sure. I but do how that. do you take that one thing and think about, like, how can your day keep going? So me, I could be on the way to work, <clears throat> blow out. Yes, I'm late to work. My kids in my classroom tearing this shit the <laughs> fuck up. Like, everything is going wrong. But then I'm like, okay, thank you, God, for a car. Thank you, God, for transportation. Mm. Thank you for at least giving me a way to get to point A to point B and to make it home safely. Mm. So, yes, it's a tire that I can pay for, but I'm not going to let that tire dictate how my day goes. So, yes, that might have put, like, a, a big block <laughs> in my day because mm. I ain't even got no spare tire in my trunk. If I get a flat, I got to call AAA. Where your spare tire at? I used it. <laughs> so it's like, it's like, it's, it's, it's a, I feel like it's about how you take those things that are going against you. Yeah. And you can either let them take you down with it, or you can find ways to navigate it to still be like, okay, my car fucked up. At least I got one. Yeah. Oh, my water off. At least I got a house. It's like, not saying my water off, no, I'm but saying, I'm saying I'm like you know that's stuff that people that go through. Like no, you have to really think about is. like no, I'm, it is. your lights might be up, but at least you got somewhere to sleep. Yeah, it so is. it's like it's it's how you take those things that are are against you and still think about the positive in your life. So I feel like for me, yes, it's a lot going wrong, but I've always been a person who likes. Okay, this is fucked up. So being but that how you, can I right? You ha you basically got it kind of figured out how to keep swimming, right? Because so, you're, your, you're, you're your own motivation. You're right. I mean, if you ain't got you, who else got you? Yeah. Hello? But this margarita <laughs> <laughs> at this point. <laughs> so do you, like, what about, you know, things that your family has instilled in you that just kind of help you get to this point? Like, was your mom, like, somebody who was super influential for you? Was it was it dad? Was it grandma? Like, who was that person for you that kind of, like, kept you, like, spearheaded? If I had to choose one person, it's definitely my grandma. Okay. Which I feel like a lot of people would say their grandma. Like, grandmas are really our first moms. Mm -hmm. Like, your grandparent is your, is your mama. Then your mama is your cousin. Not really. <laughs> but, <laughs> like, my parents, I feel like when you get older, that's when you become, like, close with your parents. Or, no, like, yeah. that's when, like, you and your parents really become, like, you understand each other. Mm -hmm. But growing up, my grandma was like the person who told me about like God, who told me how to pray, or who just told me to like be myself or to believe in myself. Like that was the person who really, still to this day, calls me and be like, you good? Yeah. Now as an adult, my mom and dad do that now, but yeah. growing up, it was my grandma. So I feel like grandparents are the ones that kind of teach you gentle love um, because they're the ones that kind of like, help you identify yourself, help you like navigate with spirituality and just kind of help you just kind of figure out who you are. And your parents be trying to discipline you like, hey, no, we don't do this. Mm -hmm. Hey, no, we do do this. And as you get older, they're like, okay, I did right. I taught you all the things you don't do. So now we can hang out. Now I can now hang can... with you. Yeah, I think I definitely agree when you it's say It's because that. grandparents are your, I view grandparents as like your guardian angel. Mm -hmm. Like my grandma, 
Nobody can tell me anything about my, about my grandma that I would disagree with, unless you say some crazy. Mm-hmm. If you say some crazy about her, what you gonna do? Oh, we have a fight. Oh, okay. I still just want to see what you gonna do. I want to try to fight you. I won't shoot you. I'm glad. Unless you go too crazy. But it's like when it comes to you her. Own a gun? Hmm? You own a gun? I could find one. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't own a gun. I don't, because I don't need a gun, because I feel like nobody's crazy. You live in Birmingham, and I heard that was, like, the number one worst city. Okay. Have you seen me on First 48? I mean, you wouldn't see you on First 48. You wouldn't, because I'm not going to jail. So, hush. Well, how, you don't have a gun. You're not going to jail. Exactly. That's why I'm not going to jail. But at the same time, nobody is also not disrespecting my grandma. I don't have a reason to go to jail. I don't have a reason to go to jail. But I'm just saying this to say, like, your grandparents are your people. Like, I don't know. I feel like the second one got stronger. I feel like the lower you go, the um, stronger it gets. Mm. So when we get to, like, number four. Who's because making it to four? No, when this leaves. Oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be gone? No. When this leaves, it's no more drinks. It's shots. Actually, after this cup, it's shots. With a chaser. Of the drink. Of the drink. You chase it with a mixed drink and the shot goes away. See, I'm teaching you. I'm your <laughs> because I'm your <laughs> I'm your grandparent. <laughs> so it's like now I'm teaching you so <laughs> What am I gonna do with you? Oh my god. Okay. Based on everything that we talked about, every where you are, you're twenty eight now. Where are we? And what are we going for right now? What is what is our ultimate goal in this place? So I am 28, living in Birmingham. I'm a teacher. I'm performing. And the goal for 29, I turned 29 in a month. Mm-hmm. I just want you to know you didn't invite me to your trip, but I want to say that on here and not in, in private. The goal, if you, hold on, what? <laughs> The goal for 29, <laughs> because Amber, why, what? <laughs> the goal for 29 is to leave Birmingham. Where do you want to go? I want to go wherever, wherever I, I don't have a location. Okay. Um, The goal for 29 is also for Dream Girls to be my last show in Birmingham. Because mm, you're going to come to Atlanta. Because I'm going to travel. I'm going to get paid to perform everywhere. Um, the goal is always to also to choreograph more, to just be more into me, to work on my relationship, mm-hmm. to work towards my relationship, mm. to work towards the end goal. Mm. And um just a year of me like really focusing on Darius. Not Darius like, oh, I gotta teach these badass kids. <laughs> Huh, if my kids watching this, <laughs> y'all are bad as fuck. I really love y'all. <laughs> but I really want to say, I'm rubbing my head because y'all just gave me an instant headache. <laughs> I love y'all so much. I'm going to visit y'all one day, but just know, this is my last year. <laughs> and um, I'm going to see y'all another time. Okay. But I still won't add you as a friend on Facebook. <laughs> Um, they're so, they, they just so, cra- they were some crazy We kids. don't want to talk about the kids. I'm sorry. You don't, wanna, be, you don't even want to talk I about I don't want to talk about so them why kids. You, you love the kids. So I, I, I really, really love, love I do the kids. love them. You're like me. When I was at Arabia, I could not leave. Like, I love you the kids. You can't leave because I fucking love them, and but I know. you gotta go. And the thing is, okay, I will say I love my kids, but me outside of the school, I'm not fulfilling no, my yourself. passion. You're not doing nothing. It's you. like I'm going to work because I know they like to dance. Mm-hmm. They like to perform. They like to do X, Y, Z. But it's like me as your teacher, I'm not also pouring into my cup. I am now. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? It's like I'm not giving myself what I need because I'm so busy giving them my margaritas. <laughs> 
So it's like now in this year, I'm giving myself my margarita. All right. I'm I going to fill my own cup. Okay. I'm going to get myself. <laughs> well, let's just fulfilled. toast to the margaritas because I feel like that's where we at. Is it good? Be. It's actually really good. I'm really proud of you because you do some stuff on Instagram that I'm not sure about drinking. Guys, and I am a bartender. He's not. So let's just let's just let's just just come on, break it in. Okay. Amber don't even know who she, she don't know. I saw it. It's not good. Sip it. That sounds good. <laughs>